you see his new kicks? Wait, wait, wait. Save it for the pod. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Yo, what's going on, guys? This is another episode of the Jerks Podcast. We're going to talk about my shoes in a second. My name is Mark Karski, your host with my co host Dan McCarty and Danny Hamill. We're here with our guest, Seth Payne. Woo! He's cool. But they were going to make, what do you think about my shoes? Don't my feet look broken? Yeah, it looks like <laughs> yeah. you broke, your, you twisted your ankle. I was genuinely concerned when I walked in here and saw you. I'm going to start playing into it. Yeah, uh, what's Just your next? Just crying with each step. Just, ah, what's oh. your next fashion accessory? A pair of crutches? <laughs> if they were supreme. <laughs> Shows up in a supreme wheelchair. <laughs> oh, as if I wouldn't. <laughs> I can get you a supreme wheelchair. <laughs> and I'll buy. It'll be a wheelchair with a supreme sticker on it. But and yeah, I will pay an ungodly amount of money for it. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> just print it out on your own too. It doesn't need to let's, be. Let's it doesn't need to be a sticker. Stick. Just yeah. use scotch tape. No, just write it on there with pencil. <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> so, give us a little intro because I feel like these guys know you a little bit more than I do. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. You, to me, I'm right off rip. You seem very established. Like you, like you kind of like you have you know what you're doing. Thanks. And I would trust you for some reason. Okay. That's May, I think it might be the beard. <laughs> I would trust. I'm a little bit jealous of the hair. Yeah, you're trustworthy. That's yeah. The, yeah, but like, do you think he'd fuck you over? He might I, take you know, I've of, the beard is new to me. Yeah, that's true. I had yeah. the so stash. Now he's for a while. less trustworthy. You were a stash guy. Oh yeah. I used stash it. wax. Uh, I did. Yeah, I yeah. waxed that bad boy. Wow. Oiled it up. Yeah, it did. I oh used God. to. I used to not think I could do the stash, and then I moved to Chicago. And then you took some testosterone, and you're like, I can fucking. Oh yeah, I just. I was like, I was like a blonde guy with a stash. Um, mm. It's a little little pedo, you know, sure. little like not the vibe. <laughs> and then I moved to Chicago and I saw so many people doing it. I'm like, I think I can pull off the stash. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many pedos in Chicago. <laughs> I will fit right in. <laughs> I'll just blend <laughs> in with her. <laughs> there probably are. Oh, uh, yeah. It's supposed yeah. to happen yeah. 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 people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, and then I grow out the beard now for, I'm from Buffalo, and I'm a big Bills fan, so yeah. I, I grow out the beard for as That's long as the Bills team? are in it. It's sports. Yeah. It's sports. sports. Football. It's football. Football. I was going to guess yeah. hockey. Okay. Okay. Not, not too far off. We got yeah. hockey team and football team from Sabres. Buffalo, and that's it. Sabres, Sabres that's and one. Bills. And those are my two um, things that bring me most pain in life is they, they lose a lot. I would have thought it was yeah. your last name. Hey. hey. <laughs> Seth Payne, check it out. <laughs> Nice. Thank you you thank got you. sound thank effects you. in it. Yeah. We're ready. This is high production. tech, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I just um, want to keep Dan around for jokes like that. That's <laughs> cool. Waka waka. But yeah, the beard. The beard's good. The beard. Uh, it it keeps me warm. How and, long can uh, we talk about his facial hair for? Do you yeah. Think? <laughs> That's, well, I think that's it. I think we just killed it right there. That's, <laughs> that's why I said that. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Next topic. Let's go. Um, how long have you been doing stand-up? I've been doing it, jeez, uh, about nine years now. Jesus fucking I just, Christ. Yeah, I just wow. passed that hurdle. I've been doing it there nine years. Congratulations. Um, but how do you feel about it? You seem happy still. How do you feel about nine years? You seem happy still. <laughs> right? I, I'm pretty happy. I feel yeah. like I'm pretty pretty optimistic I've, I've still. Yeah, still, still in denial. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot I of people to. are uh, crotchety old, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not right. here tonight. It's because of Matt I'm Rife, not on I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Matt Rife hate lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I, you know, I you feel it. I feel it. So you're probably like, well, I see, he's not that special. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing exactly. wrong with this all the time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I also say that. <laughs> I'm like, in 40 pounds, I'll be dealing with this every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hottest comic in Chicago. But no, yeah, there is a lot of like ugly, unsuccessful dudes who are like, mm. yeah. And women, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get you in trouble. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually I started doing it. Uh, I'm from Buffalo, but I lived in DC for work for like six years. And uh, I tried to do stand up, but I had horrible stage fright. Mm -hmm. It'd yeah. freeze up every time I went up. That's, and uh, I think it was bad. Getting on stage like the first time, yeah, and, like consist is like the hardest part. Oh, Just yeah, getting yeah. over that mental hump. It's a nightmare, and, uh, and like everybody I, has it pretty much. It's that's like, actually yeah. motivating to hear you say that because like you seem very super comfortable and like oh, you're having a you. super fun time. On I stage. I try yeah, kind of to now, but it's it's been uh, it was pretty painful you, at the so beginning. Jealous. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I I was so I'd freeze up and then. I was drinking. I was just like mid twenties. So I was drinking all the time. Wait, how old are you? <clears throat> I'm 35. Yeah. So I. Uh, Same age. Yeah. Hard to tell. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the mullet, man. The mullet is. You, you need guys the look mullet. Like you went to the same high school. 
completely different hobbies. <laughs> the same ski club, though. <laughs> you guys could be related. Hell like, yeah. Did one just get estrogen? I, yeah. I would be. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so jazzed to be Seth's like effeminate cousin. Dan Payne. Still can. Still can, man. Uh, yeah. So I, I started doing it out there. It was really bad, and then I did improv. Uh, Whoa. I know. This I know. Hey, yo. Great podcast, guys. Right. Hey, yo. I started doing improv to get over freezing up on yeah. stage. Yeah, it's I'm a good way to. What yeah. was the last? Th- oh, you're still doing it. I do it every Saturday night at the Comedy Clubhouse. Hey. Eight o'clock shows. Plug. Yeah, every Check Saturday out. night. Bruce and Susan, that's my team. We're the house team. Bruce ah. and Susan. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that your mic's getting out. It's not even me doing it. It's just <laughs> the comedy gods going, yes, and shut up. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, because I used to, it took me, like, the first nine months of doing stand-up, I got uh oh, physically sick to my stomach whenever <laughs> yeah. I like had to go on stage and I would just sit in a corner quietly and I'd go up and I'd bomb and then I'd leave. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. talk to anybody. I didn't make any friends. And you look so friendly stuff. too, you know? Yeah. yeah Imagine yeah, looking like me. My <laughs> tattoos I'm just like, I feel like straight facing everybody. <laughs> it, <laughs> but but that that makes you more interesting. Like I want to yeah. hear like, the crazy shit that, that you want to say. Everybody would come up to me and be like, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. What are you going up? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. last. Yeah, <laughs> but you got you got to deal with that state every time you step out the door. No, I yeah, imagine people. you're like, oh, everybody's gonna stare at me, dude. Literally, and then you put on a ski mask and fucking uh, and disability broken boots. Shoes, I'm like, yeah. you're like, I don't know why they keep looking at me. <laughs> right, and sometimes I cover up. I'll put a fucking ski cap on and a turtleneck, and then I'm one of you with gloves. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it was bad. I, I I used to I used to do that. I used to go by myself. And uh, I would drink way too much too, mm-hmm. which didn't help. So I'd black out. So I would, I'd record it sometimes, but it would be me not saying anything. And I was like, this is horrible. It was just pain. So, Real bad. Kind of so, funny. Yeah. Kind of funny. You should review kind that. Kind of funny. Funny Material. now. You should review that on camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually. Well, no, I think I deleted it because I... Yeah, re-get was, it. Then. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. That's pain. That's pain. That's pain. That's <laughs> deep pain. Uh, but yeah, I did improv for a while. And then I, got, I drank the Kool-Aid. And uh, I was really into that. And then people were like, I was doing a show, actually. This is kind of funny. I was doing a show in in D.C. I was really into the EDM community, if you can believe it, <laughs> this guy. Uh, and uh, and I was uh, taking a lot of Molly, drinking a lot. It was a good time. And um, I was throwing shows. And when I got into comedy, uh, this club, this like club named Flash in D.C., it's like a cool whatever f- club. They were like, hey, uh, we have uh, Sunday nights free. You should come and do some comedy here. And I was like, well, I do like improv. It's not really stand. They're like, no, just come do the jokes. I don't know if my troop can get here in time. I don't know. <laughs> it was it was crazy. So I was like, I wanted stage time. So I'm like, OK, cool. That I knew n- no stand up comedians in D.C. because I had only bombed. So I invited <laughs> improvisers to do stand up. Nice. <laughs> Sounds like it could be good, right? It's no. pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, no, Sounds like a sitcom episode. It's pretty bad. Everybody uh, who doesn't I, do comedy went. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you, every comedian was like, holy shit. The crazy part was it was improvisers, so it was it was always packed out. They would bring a crowd every every show that we did. Is that true, wait, Dan? improvisers bring crowds? Yeah, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Is that, <laughs> is that a different scene to. out there in DC? They're that supposed to, man. Yeah, dude, yeah, I dude. can be fake nice. I look up to a yes and do a lot of empty rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty bad comedy. The first show I ever did, I invited my uh, my dad and my brother to it, and no one told me how to run a show at all. All right, so I did th- a three hour long showcase show with me doing five minute bits in between every comic. How many comics? And there was like twenty comics. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Mic. It was bad. It was an open mic. Yeah, you're right. It was an open mic. <laughs> no, I look back. I, it was so. I uh, there was a guy who I had on who was like established there. He did his time, and then afterward, he called me the next day, and he's like, he's like, that was uh, like one of the worst shows I've ever been to. And he's like, and it's he's like, I think it's because no one told you what you were doing at all. And he's like, can I give you pointers? And I was like, please, for the love of God. <laughs> so uh, Pete hooked me up. Pete Bergen, great, great comic guy DC. So that started my path, and then that was actually shtick. That was shtick at, yeah. before it was shtick at Shuba's now in Chicago. Uh, the first iteration of it was shtick, and I did that up until I moved to Chicago, and then I brought it over, found a home for it at Shuba's Tavern, and I do that once a month. So well, yeah. those were the seeds of my, my stand-up comedy career. On, on that note, you do produce a lot of shows. 
and <laughs> always a and bit of too many, He's too many. I, I got to say thank you. Um, <laughs> Had you on, I think all of them. All of them, yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Of course, of course. Um, I've had you on. I have to have yeah, you yeah. on the shows, man. Love to, for man. sure, would love to have you on. But uh, you. a lot of your shows too are a little off the wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The bucket show. Oh uh, yeah, Power uh, Comedy Hour. Bull, bull bits, R.I.P. We did that for a hot minute. Yeah. Power Comedy Hour. We like doing stuff that's like a yeah, it's different because there are so many mics, there are so many showcases in the Chicago area. You want to do something that's a little different that people are gonna be like, oh, that's do you talk think, about it. Do you I, think of the idea and then find the place, or do you find the place and then shape your idea to the place? A lot of times, like Bull Bits was me and Brad Rickard just uh, smoking weed and trying to think of a cool show. Like uh, the the spot that I was doing uh, laughs at Lakeview, which was a show that I started right out of COVID, mm-hmm. um, just because they were opening, they opened up a place and I was like, "Can I do a show here?" And they had no preference if you know it was a good idea or not. And uh, they're like, "Yeah, once a week." And I was like, "Yeah, I'll figure it out." And uh, so I did that. <laughs> and then they're like, "Hey, it's going so well, and it's like our busiest night of the week when we do this show." Uh, we're going to give you Mondays, too, to do, like, an open mic or whatever you want. So we tried oh, wow. an open mic for a minute, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't it wasn't the vibe, I guess. And uh, me and Brad were like, what could else What else could we do? Bowl bits was basically people in the audience write down whatever they want, put it in the bowl. And they do this around town, actually. Yeah. We thought it was an original idea. I that like, like there's, like, 30 other shows like this. It was but. the first time I'd heard of it. <laughs> I hear Joe Rogan talks about, oh, yeah, we do the bottom of the barrel. I'm like, they yeah. still says idea. No, it's, it is... <laughs> Every like a lot of people have thought of this idea, but it's a, it's a fun idea because it's, it's like the it's audience. So original. <laughs> it was it, <laughs> bottom of the barrel. I like that. Dude, it was a fun show. It was good. It, it was. was uh, wait, we so got they just some give topics. We talked about. So yeah, and anybody oh, in the audience yeah, like that. Any anyone in the audience could put whatever they want on these slips of paper. So now the audience is engaged. And then comics would go up, and for five minutes, you would just riff on whatever oh. you drew. Yeah. Oh. He would, he would yeah. I'll tell you, I, one yeah. of my topics, one of my favorites. It's an <laughs> art. It is an art by itself. I'm horrible at it. I like, came weird. up with the idea. I was the worst person every time. <laughs> that it was is so my bad. Specialty. I you really? I'm getting hard thinking about it right now. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. We should bring it back. Uh, bring it back. One of, my, one of my topics was dog pussy. <laughs> nice. I made somebody do a riff on that, and it was the funnest time I ever had at a show. Well, it's great. There's so many you get, oh my God, they said it. They said, Dog I, I was going to say, you get so excited when someone draws your <laughs> fucked up thing or whatever <laughs> thing. People would put, like, roofing, and you're like, roofing? That's where you go. But it was great because we'd have, like, big comics, like Ab, uh, Abby Sanchez would come through a lot. And he loved to do that show. And my other shows, it was like, he's like, oh, I'm good on. But that one he liked because it forced him to come up with new material. Yeah, so yeah, it kind of yeah. made him step out of his, uh, his like, safety bounds. We kind of have a thing here. like It's called like a drive-by round where we'll have people in the crowd just yell out topics. Okay. And just... Oh, nice. Oh, so it's very similar. Yeah. 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 It's fun. It's a fun way to come well, up with new what stuff. What did you guys do about racial slurs that might have been written down? <laughs> I don't think, There's you know, no we probably should have. Yeah, I don't think. The comedians are probably just smart about it. They're like, oh, no. I yeah, should read yeah, this yeah. in my head first. I don't think we ever really experienced that. People would, like, write swear words, but nothing, like, really bad like that. I think because it was in Lakeview. So it was like, <laughs> it was like, you know what I mean? Like, no one was like, ugh. You know what I mean? They're thinking it, but they're not writing it. You know, I was like, uh, I would have used my left (laughs) hand and wrote the N word. Are you kidding me? I did have my writing. I did have like comics go up there, and I knew they were lying because they would go up and be like, "This one says uh, big butts," and then they would do a whole. They do their joke on big butts, and I was like. This guy's phoning it in. <laughs> He's yeah, totally no, phoning yeah, it the, in. The rule is you cannot use material, man. You got to risk. Yeah, that was the whole point. So, and I'm like, I know that that guy did not just draw. He's just like big trying butts. to think about it. He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's this perfectly timed joke with like laugh breaks. It was funny though. He did it. So he tried. I I saw him. He drew one. He got. He didn't do well on that first joke. And he felt the sting of like, Ooh. I'm out of my safety blanket. Mm-hmm. And then he went right back to. You know the whole like, purpose mm. of the show. Uh, Dan said the whole purpose of the show. I'll just repeat what you said. Okay, I'm back on. I'm back on. The whole purpose of the show to be outside of your element. Well, it's kind of like we do we do weekly themes of the week, and then whenever okay. Danny does one that's even remotely related to a bit that I already have, I just go, oh, sweet, and I just do that bit. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you're just waiting. Just waiting for the perfect one. Put I like in. to take the gumption, but... Well, it was at one of your shows uh, that I met uh, front of the room, Christian Color. Oh yeah, uh, he's been coming oh, out yeah. here pretty regularly. Oh, he's been um, on the pod. Been on the pod. Awesome, uh, love that. Comes out to the mic supports. Uh, um, 
But I know that he does. I've done some crazy uh, shows with that guy. Yeah, I was gonna say like EDM shows. Oh yeah, stuff like that. You guys like travel around and do (laughs) shows at festivals. Wait, you've traveled with him? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple times. Oh, they're going to Miami. (laughs) I'm going to Miami. You're going to Miami with him? That'll be dope, actually. That'll be that'll be really good. He booked our airplane tickets for the day of the show, (laughs) so. But he, <laughs> he is. For the day I mean, the morning of the show, you're flying out. Yeah, that's yeah, cutting get, it close, I'll, I'll man. Oh, at five o'clock in the morning. Oh my god! Don't wear Yikes, those shoes, dude. though. They'd have problems no, with my, sand. They're my Miami shoes. <laughs> <laughs> are you no, fly? Are you, you flying fit in Spirit with the, with the senior crew out there? You'll fit in right with everyone else on Spirit, then. That's everybody. Everybody's always in like Gucci on Spirit, <laughs> dude, and you're like, you're on Spirit, you have dude. What's happening? As nice as possible on the airplane. It's true. Yeah. Scarf. You gotta get the. I'm the Spirit airline that will. This is probably crash. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a special occasion for me. When we actually, when we, when we, he flew us out for a, a retreat in Las Vegas, which was insane. And uh, he flew us out on Spirit, and we got on Spirit Airlines. I've only flown like a handful of times, and it's been fine. But the the staff there, everyone greeted us and was like, "Hey, it's my first day." Like on the way in, they're like, "Hey, welcome! It's my first time doing this." The and we pilot? were like, yeah, "No, like all the attendants." Oh. <laughs> and we were like, "Yeah, the pilots." Like, I have no clue what I'm doing. You guys know how to work Let's a joystick? Go. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys played video games before? You guys got my back if I mess up, right? Yeah, uh, that's what it felt fights. like. <laughs> but what was cool is the guy. We made him laugh. Christian was just yelling wild stuff and made him laugh. And he came over. He's like, "You guys are cool." And he gave us like four Jack Daniels mini guys, nice. uh, which I was like, "Sweet." And then I'm like, "I'll just drink this straight." Uh, on a plane, and I don't do liquor really, so I'm drinking this thing, being like, <laughs> and then like, carbonation makes you drunker faster. Horrible. Yeah, there was no carbonation; it was just no straight drink. Jack. But it'd be you'd get drunk faster if it was carbonated. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right, so he's doing me a favor. Oh. Yeah, you're evening it out. No, that's dope. I mean, that's what you're on the airplane for—to drink. Yeah, it's, it's I got pretty drunk off that but like, little bit. Are they bit. shitty flights? I've never been on the. It's wait, Southwest. We're talking about right? Uh, Spirit. 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 This is Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Is it a biplane? There's, it's a regular plane, right? Yeah. Okay, regular yeah, yeah. amount of people. There's yeah. actually there's an oar at each seat. You guys got to even know. Yeah, it's a no, great it's workout, colors, though. But it's a gotta, it's great, great on the abs. It's pretty See, cool. Because I have this thing where it's like, no matter what, the plane sucks. First class it sucks. Yeah. Because you're on an airplane. Have you flown first class? Yeah, that's wow. why I get to talk about it. I did it once. So okay. now I get to add... <laughs> Dude, I put I've my, never flown first. Dude, I put my Louis awesome. bag on the ground. Only reason I did it is because it was the same price as an extra carry on. Okay. Oh, so I was okay. Like, well, I'm doing that anyway. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> so I'm then gonna treat everybody flex. like shit. Yeah, exactly. I put yep, my Louis yep. bag down, put my feet over it, and they go, "Sir, no bags on the ground." I'm like, <laughs> "It's fucking first." Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me no. What up is this, here? Auschwitz, dude? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I, had fucking, I had to put my bag up there like a poor. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, yeah you're right. all the same on the plane, man. At the end of the day, yeah, they're, they're true. saving me. Um, I, over, I think I overheard you say something about your special. Are you doing a special? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I've, uh, I've, I've never. I, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Like I said, I started comedy in D.C. Uh, moved out here in 2019. I've been really hustling with the stand-up, especially um, prior. Uh, after COVID, uh, uh, post-COVID, I should say. But uh, yeah, I've been hustling. I've really been working towards doing like a full 45 to 60 minute set. And uh, I was going to do it around here. And then I I thought about it. And I'm like, you know, I've never performed in Buffalo. I love Buffalo. A lot of my family's still out there. And I'm like, why don't I just make this a big event? I'll go back. I'll find a cool venue. So it's been like, man, it's this whole past year has been me trying to find the venue, find the other comics, figure out like the Airbnb, figure out the ticketing, all that stuff. And I got this place that rules in Buffalo. It's called Babeville, which is ridiculous. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, Babeville. Uh, Babeville? Babeville. Do it's they a, better have the hottest bartender? Right, oh, you better, better. <laughs> it's like on brand, <laughs> Babeville, dude. Uh, it's nice. a church that they turned into a music venue and then called it <laughs> Babeville, which no, is I like wild. It a lot. Uh, and then it's so the, the, the church part obviously is huge, built for music, but they have a lower level that seats like 100 people and has a little bar down there. It's like perfect for comedy. Dope. They do like, uh, I think they do a showcase there like once a month. My buddy Zach Deesh, uh hooked me up with the Connects there. He's performed there a bunch. Um, he's from Buffalo, lived in Chicago. He's in New York now, crushing. Uh, but he, uh, he was like, I, I got the Connect, we'll figure it out. So it's been this back and forth. Finally locked it in like two months ago. Nice. It's going down February, February 16th. It's Friday. If, That's my birthday. If any, yeah? 
Hell, yeah. My brothers, too. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're partying with my brother I wanted to be an asshole after so the show. Bad. Yeah, make it about you, Danny. Nice. <laughs> 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 Come through, man. We'll we'll double Sorry, birthday you, you celebrate. Just, 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 All right, we'll re actually it's your birthday. We'll, yeah, relocate. Yeah, relocate. we'll relocate. We'll relocate. We'll, we'll do it here. Yeah, we'll fix hell the yeah. If you could change the date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. You know, that's fair. That's me, fair. Uh, I'm I'm pumped though. I, I like I I've got the set down. I'm working on merch for like the first time ever, which is pretty wild. That's cool. And then uh, we sold out the eight o'clock show, and there's gonna be a ten thirty. So if you're in Buffalo and you want to come to that. Come through. It's twenty dollars tickets. I know some of you are. It's gonna be fun. I know you are. So yeah. Go. Am Please I... come through or tell people that you know that live in Western New York. Babeville. This is I mean, Babeville, dude. Why wouldn't you want to show up to that? Yeah. It's I want. Be fun. This is for more of me and the listener. I feel like you guys knew, but I went after you said Buffalo, New York. I went, oh. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck is Buffalo the whole time? Like oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, dude, I don't know. I feel like that's okay. a smart move, though, because then your Niagara material is going to be fresher there, too. You exactly. Know? So yeah. You well, okay, so this special. is this Wait, is the Niagara conundrum, Falls, though. What's that? You said Niagara Falls. That's in it's right next to Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. So Niagara Falls also divides. Niagara Falls is in New York? And Canada. Yeah. Yes. Right? It's like. It's the division between the two. We gotta tell people about this. Yeah, <laughs> look it up. It's pretty wild. It's pretty cool. It's a it's a wonder. It's a wonder of the world. I have uh, heard an interesting <laughs> thing that the uh, New York side of Niagara Falls is like a dirty, rotten shit. It's bad. Hole. Yeah, and it's then bad. And the Canadian side of Niagara yeah. Falls is like, ooh, yeah. I, I whenever just someone amazing. someone goes there uh, to get married or or to just see it or whatever, I'm like, go to the Canada side for sure because yeah. unfortunately the. The New York side is rough, but then I tell them go to <laughs> Buffalo like after and party because <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> rules. It's a it's a kick ass city. Um, no, the problem with me doing it, like you say, is for all new people, which I'm excited about. But it's also for mostly my family and friends, and I have mm -hmm. invited people from like I'm talking middle school, high school, college. <laughs> so it's kind of a little bit of a nightmare in that if yeah. I bomb on this show, it's gonna be pretty like it's it's like the ultimate bomb. Yeah. Of like for everyone of my past but life. But there's no way. There's yeah, no I know, way. but we're good. We're good. <laughs> How would that happen? We're good. Some, some we're people, good. They're already on your side. I'm not thinking side. about they're it like, at they're all. So, they're probably so excited just no, to yeah. see someone even they went to school with. That's like, true. Who's doing a thing? Yeah. Dude, none of us are doing shit. You yeah, know? Like, it that's is. Great. It is. Uh, everybody that I hit up or like when I posted about it, everyone was really supportive. Bought tickets, obviously. So. Uh, I'm excited. They actually, when I was asking them for like the two times, I was like, "Can we do like an early show, late show?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll do it." Uh, we did when Joe Para came through. Who do you guys know, Joe Para at all? I know the name. He does a lot of shows and shit. He, like he's, TV. he's been on HBO. He's kind of like a soft-spoken, really tall dude from Buffalo. So for he's like we have like two or three Buffalo comic claim yeah. to fames. So for them to be like, oh, we'll give you the Joe Para special is like, fuck yeah, dude. Like That's awesome. it was a good it was like a good little all right, I'm on the right path here in the right venue. So uh, yeah, I'm like super pumped, man. We're gonna tape it. I went to school for I was film. Just about to ask that. Yeah, so I went to school for film in college. So I got some buddies in Buffalo and Western New York area that have really nice camera setups, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll just film it for you." Nice. I'm like, like "Hell yeah, yeah." Fuck How many yeah. angles? Three as Fuck of right yeah. now. Maybe maybe a fourth. Two Whoa. stationary and we'll one see. moving. Yeah, that's yeah. the game plan. And then, God, uh, and then I just bought a bunch of like mics and mic stands to do the crowd and all nice. that good stuff too. That's but dope. yeah, it's gonna be again. It's another thing. Much like when I started doing stand up, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing it. And then yeah. I'm like, I'll release it on YouTube because that's what everybody seems that's to be doing saying. now. Will that be oh, yeah. your first piece of content on YouTube? I have uh, sets up there, okay. obviously, like for when I have to submit to stuff, and they go pretty good. But like, I feel like majority of my material has only been done. Like locally. Are you gonna do like a little trailer for it, sneak peek? Ooh. Some jokes, get people. I probably ready. should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that was kind of my next move. I was like, I really want to sell out one of these at least. I'd love to sell out both. But my next big move was to uh was to release like a promo thing and be like, hey, first show sold out, which it is, hell yeah. Uh sold out today. So like I'm um nice. that's the next move. We'll see what's up. I feel like every comedian wants to be that guy where you sit on the stoop. And the guys film, and then you stand up and you start saying all your uh, oh yeah tour dates while you're walking past all the plebs. So what? They'll be in Chicago this day, this day, this day, extra day. <laughs> what I I already kind of promised this on the Bills fans page on uh, <laughs> Facebook to try and get people to buy tickets was I was like if the, these shows sell out I'll throw myself through a table which I have done in the 
past for for, for the free. Bills Mafia yeah. for the for free, and um, <laughs> and I haven't done it in like uh, two years, but uh, it's a skill you never forget. Yeah, exactly. Right, so. Right. I, I sold out the first one, so I might do that for like a promo. Start it cool and then throw myself into a folding uh, table. So that'd be pretty that cool. Would be a Stay fun tuned. Way to do it. Folding table. Follow me for that. Yeah. Damn. Get a little uh, little hometown hometown love. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I like the recklessness. I try. Yeah. I, I tried to do it, so I, I threw myself through a couple tables on my own during COVID. <laughs> just, um, just for fun. Yeah. You're supposed to do it at the tailgate before, surrounded by friends. Usually someone throws you into the table. You guys um, are all on Zoom, and you're like, I'm going to do it. Pretty much. I had my girlfriend film it, and I jumped <laughs> off of, uh, like, park benches into these tables. What they don't tell you is uh, you really need a, a long one. If you do a short one, they're yeah, more sturdy. I right. So yeah. I had to hit it like oh. three times before it broke. Were you, was, were you hoping uh, that these popped off a little? What's that? Were you hoping that these videos popped off a little? They did pop off, and, oh. and not in the way not in the way that uh, you wanted them to. It was every time what? they would be like, "That table was already dented," or they'd be like, "His form is horrible," or like, <laughs> "People were people form. were roasting the <laughs> shit out of me." It was dented because this is my fourth attempt at this <laughs> fucking table. Okay, thank God it's dented. I like I fucked up my leg it. for like a week from it. It was bad. It was bad. I would always chug a beer. I would chug a beer before I do it too. I'd be like, you know, Bills are gonna win this playoff game. Let's fucking go. And then I would chug a full of bat blue Seventh take, he's like and then that Bum was the on. thing so then i'm like all stained and everything by the end they're like dude oh this guy's a mess and like it was i'm like of course i'm a mess i'm throwing myself through a table but uh but yeah i got yeah, a lot of hate but i did get i did get a little hero. pop from it i did get a little pop from it so we'll that's see dope, might dope. bring it back for the promo you're going to be doing your special be like, bring up the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, That's we're how you end your special is you <laughs> jump off the stage actually, onto a table. <laughs> that would be incredible, actually. The late show, just in case. Right. Oh, yeah, up. yeah, exactly. I do it for both, and then I'm just limping <laughs> on the second one, like <laughs> bleeding. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I will jump through a table. Come to my special. I'll jump through a table. You got to be there. You got to be there. I Maybe I'll release it on Patreon, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, and OnlyFans. And OnlyFans. So <laughs> what happens to the... Uh, the material that you use during the special that you released, do you keep using it? Do you have? Are you gonna that start over? That is like a great question. I'm hoping. I've actually been writing a lot of new stuff lately, which mm -hmm. is yeah. wild. Because for like two years, I was basically just perfecting what I had. Um, yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like you come up with a lot of stuff pretty quickly. Yeah. Do you guys struggle with new material? It hits me in waves, like different, different state. Like I'll sit and suddenly just write a whole bunch. Of Work on them, work on the new jokes, and then, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then it'll be like months. It could be months before I write anything new, and I'm just like, God, I, I'm not creative at all. It's yeah. just, it was just that joke, and then, and then it just shows up again, and I'm like, oh, I got a fruitcake joke now, <laughs> which I'll be debuting tonight. Oh my God. <laughs> Y'all should have been here. It was great. We promise. <laughs> Yeah, I try to come you? up with stuff like weekly, but like a lot of it is just not good. So sometimes I wonder, like maybe if I didn't, maybe <laughs> maybe my success rate would be higher. But I don't know. You know, maybe I should you gotta, just work you on like what try I have. Out different but things because I used to write. Yeah, I enjoy it. I used to write out jokes long form, word for word. Oh wow! And now I don't write at all. Yeah. Yeah, I don't write word for word anymore either. Which I, I like. I pride myself as a writer, but I, I definitely don't work that way anymore. I feel yeah. like that can confuse you, so, or it confuses me, because I'm like, oh, yeah. I missed that one line that right. I wrote. So if I just do like bullet points or yeah, yeah, yeah I do bullet points. Yeah, points, yeah. Right? exactly. Just like, yep. all right, hit that, this, that. As long as there's the punchlines in there. Yeah. As long as I don't forget that part, then that'll be good. Yeah, they won't know if I miss this certain detail. Mm -hmm. I feel as long as I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To answer your question, though, um, yeah, I'll probably keep some of the questions or some of the questions, some of the uh, some of the like the good bits, the tried and trues in there. But yeah, try and come up with like a whole new forty five in like the next year. That's kind Are of you going to try and come out and produce another one? I would love to. Like do a new one every year. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's kind of how it's going now, right? I feel like people are. A lot of people stuff are doing it every year, quickly. every other year. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I mean, know. people are burning their material. They're showing all of their material on the internet yeah. anyway. So yeah. you kind of might as well at the end of the year be like, here's all of it. Sure. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. The comedy's changed, man. It's yeah, wild. You can't do the same 10 minutes for 20 years anymore, dude. You got to fucking. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I don't even. I get tired of doing the same 10 minutes for six months. Dude, I've been doing it for like, two years, and I'm sick of this 10. Yeah. I'm sick of this 10. You gotta, but you got you to gotta perfect that, like, that five or that 10. We were talking about this earlier. That one minute, that three minute, that five minute, that eight and 10. Because when you're called upon for it, 
like I know a couple of comics have gone on like HBO specials and stuff. They don't ask them for like a forty five minute special. They're oh, like, yeah, no send us a five minute your yeah, best yeah, yeah. five minute tape. They're not gonna watch mm. the forty five. No, no, exactly, way. exactly. They're not even so. gonna watch the five. They're yeah, gonna... <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's it's one of those things. I think you gotta have those ones that are like locked in for maybe yeah. for forever type mm-hmm. thing until yeah. you blow up to the next level. But I don't know. That's that's how I've been. Like operating refine it until it's undeniable in every yes. room like One, it doesn't matter yep, yep. you just woke up you could do it you're good yeah. hammered you could do it yeah. Yep. yeah that is something like uh i did comedy on state <clears throat> and oh, there's nice. they they well it's in madison so it's three and a half hour drive and then it's a draw so you might not even make it on. and then you get three minutes i think it's it's on there and you get three <laughs> minutes and so i got on and the whole time i'm sitting there panicking like what three what three what three what do i do and uh, I ended up going up there and fucking, I didn't bomb, but I did not do well. Like, everybody that I went there with, Dan, like, Dan got pulled aside. They're like, hey, uh, <laughs> hey uh, maybe give us your email address for later. And I'm like, you guys want to talk to me? And they're like, nah. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Nah. That's brutal. Damn, but, oh, man. But that, that really did push me down. I'm like, all right, I got to do, like, I have a three minutes I'm like, all right, that's gonna that's gonna be my three minutes. If I'm ever called upon to do three, yeah, that's that's what I'm going for. Yep, lock it and in. yeah, five, eight, ten, and just oh yeah, bounce it up like that. And then in the between time, try and write new shit that doesn't drive you crazy when yeah. you're saying it again and I again. I think I think at the end of the day, like you you got those stuff that you know that works well, and for a fresh crowd, this is what I'll do. But then in the meantime, you're still hustling, you're still going up mm-hmm. all the time. So you got to do that new stuff that keeps it fresh, keeps it exciting so you so you don't turn into yeah. a curmudgeon like yeah. we said at the beginning Jade. which i yeah yeah For yeah sure. which i you said that at the beginning and i was like thinking about it and i'm like i definitely have gotten more bitter producing <laughs> yeah. like the last couple of years i produced too many shows i'm trying to scale it back um i just said yes to way too many things initially i think out of COVID, i was like i'll do everything mm-hmm. like whatever and now i'm at a point where i'm like oh my god like I don't even know. I feel like everybody always, I, people are actually pretty, pretty easy to work with out here. But then when you get it from so many angles, from so many shows after a while, you're like, this person is always a pain in the ass. Or yeah. like, you just kind of get like little things will tick you off. So I'm trying, I'm personally trying to dial it back to like maybe produce only two shows and then focus on those and then focus a little bit more on coming up with like new material and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah this so. is this is something that we wanted to talk to you about yeah. because we want to like produce shows sure. and you produce awesome <laughs> shows and oh, you're thank you. like Thanks. I've been I on I too many shows. 3 like I think and they're always just a lot of fun, you Thanks, know. Man. Everyone I always that. has fun. So I think Very fun. Try we we try just want like is there any like tips or tri- like advice yeah. that you would give to people who want to produce sure. shows? Jerks, we could do an hour, like a guarantee between us. Yeah. Or longer. It's actually with just us four. So yeah. It's like a package deal. Yeah. Cheaper yeah. now. Or else just, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> My price is going up. Mine. <laughs> I'm wearing these shoes. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, tips and tricks. I would say, yeah, if you're going to produce a show, produce like one show and just go all in on it, I'd say. Be for a live make show. That great instead of a bunch yeah. that are good. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I've had a couple of people be like, you're producing too many shows, so people don't know what to come support you for. Oh, so I actually, if, like, if you go to my Instagram now, I have my podcast and I have shtick. Those are, like, the main two that I promote. And then if you go to, like, my link tree, then that links to all of the other shows that I, like, ghost <laughs> produce or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, I like having those, and it's, it's I have a problem myself where, like, it's hard for me to step away from projects because I, like... Uh my name's been uh, attached to it so I, i'm like i want it to keep being fun and keep being yeah, cool right. but, but i think at the end of the day for, not everything has to last forever you know? yes you exactly you you're right yeah. totally right uh yeah it's one of those things where you just kind of have to focus on one maybe two shows but really have one attached to your name so that you can be like that's my show that's my calling card and people yeah. people know that attached with you and then you can invest more time into it you can if you want to boost it on like Facebook or Instagram and throw money into it, you can. I've always done all free shows because I don't want to deal with the extra stress of ticketing stuff. Sure. Like me doing this event is like mm-hmm. insane to me. Like with the, t- I was like figuring <laughs> it out, I'm like, oh my God, money? like I have to throw oh. how much money? I was like, ah. Mm-hmm. So I, I do free events and then I do um, tips from that. And then if once the show has gone well for a while, um, I usually establish a good like rapport with the bar venue. And I mean, if you're at a comedy club, they're already going to have stuff set in place. Yeah. But all, all most of the shows I've started have been at bars that have never done yeah. comedy before. 
So it's one of those things where I'm like, this is what I'll need straight up. I'll need the support from you guys. If you can help promote it, awesome. But outside of that, like, you know, most of these places, they'll be like, you got to pay us 100 bucks per show. And then I'll disperse that towards the hosts or producers or whatever. So I would say establishing a good, a good rapport with the place that you're doing the show at and establishing, like, this is what we're going to pay out at the beginning is a good place to start. And then have multiple producers on that show. If, you, if you're like, I can do this on my own, you can, but it's going to like wear you down. Yeah, you want to delegate stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then wonderful. bring on a load that you can do. Like if, if you can only really handle a show that's once a month and you can blow it up for once a month, just do that. Yeah. Like a weekly one is like a huge undertaking. You guys know you're doing the, the yeah. open mic. An open mic is a huge undertaking. So Yeah, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> it's a lot, man. We make it look was, uh, easy, though. I had the uh, poetry and punchline show, and that yeah. was a weekly show. Yeah, yeah. And that was fucking exhausting. Just yes. trying to make sure, all right, I got the people, and then the last minute cancellations and all this and that. And, and then, so I was like, if I ever do another show, it would be every other week, once a month, I think would be perfect. Once a month is a nice one. You know, yeah. Yeah. just once a month, you could focus on it, and then you're like looking forward to it rather than waking up being like, fuck. It's Thursday. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> this is another. Let's get it done. This is another tip of the trade. T- tip, trick, chip, titty, trip of the trade. Uh, where Eventbrite is kind of like your best friend, whether it's ticketed or free. Uh, if you go on Eventbrite, I think I don't know if you guys have experienced Does it this. Email people in the area. It will. It will bring up like if you if you go to a, an event that is similar to that so if someone goes to another like random showcase or like a poetry thing yeah it will suggest other things to you if you're looking for it a and then it will also sometimes just like send you an email and be like hey this free show is tonight so you get a lot of people through like promotion just through that right on um which rocks and it's like free email chain basically exactly yeah and you can like there's tiers of it but again with the free free shows i think it lets you do um like 50 tickets that you can RSVP per show. And then you can kind of get an idea, oh, okay, like these 10 people RSVP'd, so that's nice. We have a crowd tonight ahead of time. So it's a nice way to kind of reach people that you wouldn't normally reach and then also gauge what your crowd's going to be like for the night. And that's totally free. You can do that on there, which is pretty rad. That's a recent thing I discovered that's been helping. There isn't that many shows that are on that comedy-wise, at least free comedy-wise. and now that I put it out there, it's going to be all of them. So we gotta, we gotta do yeah. this. He, we, there you go. He just gave us some game that saved us about three years of Google. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. And, and headaches. <laughs> it's it saved a us a lot of headaches. It took for me to come up with that sentence for you guys. Are there any like red flags to look out for? Because like sometimes uh, we'll land ourselves in a fucking brewery and no one's paying Breweries attention. Are, you know? Breweries are tough. Well, that's, that's the other. Like oh my god. Yeah. We kind of just not. Well, yeah, but like you know, maybe you can see it before it happens. Like a show we've done. Like did the red room sold out perfect oh well, yeah it's the red that's a comedy it's set club up, yeah. it's you got it you do have to think about the venue you're in like this place is great because it's low ceilings mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's not it's kind of uh like i don't even know kind of square it's not like mm-hmm. a circle i don't know like little things like that um are make a huge difference when you're in a brewery it's like massive so the laughs get lost in there. Like Bayville, there's a reason why I'm stoked for that lower level as opposed to that higher, huge yeah, church. Nice oh, my stories. God. Those laughs are so hard to get. They get People will laugh, but it gets lost in the room. So, so right. having, like, you know, obviously lower ceilings if you can, and then also even just having, like, a spotlight on the person that's talking. Oh, oh yeah. Like, oh. just you can do a cheap one. Like, here you kind of have some lighting over there. Danny, but like, write that down. Uh, it's <laughs> being recorded. <laughs> a little, spot, <laughs> little oh, spotlight oh, helps. No one, no one clicked yeah. the I'm not going to watch this. $10 spotlight from I, Home I Depot. That, oh, okay. That's like a game changer. Um, what else is uh, red flags I'm trying to think of? If you're in a bar that's like more of like a, um, like we do the Power Comedy Hour, yeah. and that is like a college drinking bar, Jake's oh, boy. Pub. Oh, boy. Uh, we tried showcases there, and they were rough because people don't have the attention span and a lot of time you're bombarding people with comedy that they didn't even know they were showing up for That's right. the worst so feeling. if you yep. can make it fun like power comedy hour works because people come in ready to drink already so if they're like oh we're gonna dr- it's two minute sets i get to boo the person 30, if they go over yeah 30 comics and two everybody it, gets two minutes two minutes right. there's a countdown clock on the tv above where they perform and if they go over two minutes. Everyone in the bar is allowed to boo them. That's good. So That's people, good. so people are excited. They gonna, yeah. They're going to cheers good. after every person. So now they're engaged with drinking. Okay. 
the bar's stoked because you got 30 people there, and then at least, and then they're bu- they're selling drinks because everybody is drinking, and then people get to boo the shit out of people on stage. It's like it, it worked out perfectly. So I think if you are gonna do one of those like pop up bar shows, you gotta have some kind of like hook with it, yeah. or the sets have to be short. Like they right, they right. can't go over like four or five minutes because people point. will lose attention span. So yeah, it's I don't know. There are like other venues like Atmosphere Works because we had a stripper pole on stage, mm-hmm. yeah, so nice. that was fun. Uh, and then there was great Danny. lighting there and everything. Danny yeah, I, I notoriously performed on there and crushed. Uh, <laughs> that was that was yeah. one of my best sets ever. Honestly, that, that you did great, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like that that venue rocks too because that's like. It's pretty much a gay bar in atmosphere or in uh, in Andersonville, but like you get a lot of people walking in that are down for comedy there, which right. rocks. And then there's a built-in stage already, and there's a stripper pole, so it's like okay, maybe they're gonna do some crazy shit on the pole. So there's like a little bit of you just have to have little things to one up that show that brings you in. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, if there's anything else that I've learned? Yeah, I do, don't do like. <laughs> when I started out, I would put way too many comics on shows, and then when you get <laughs> when you get the tips, you divide them up. Everybody gets like two bucks. So you really have to like stick to your guns sometimes and be like, we're only gonna put up, you know, four or five people, and everybody crush it. You want that show to be like an hour and a half because I feel like the shows and they do this a lot in the clubs too. When it's like two hours, two and a half hours, you're like you're you feel like you're being held hostage. That's you're like, I want to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And you're like, dude, can I go? Um, when you leave at like an hour and a half ish or a little under, like you want more. So yeah. you're like, you're like, damn, dude, I, that was great. I'm, right. I'm gonna come back again next time because oh, I yeah. feel like they did it perfectly. Or I would have liked to see someone. I want people to want more and not be like that ran way too that fucking long. I don't want to come to the show again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. shorter is always better. Yeah, big time. We went to uh, uh, a uh, we call it a open mic in. Um, was it the Comedy Mothership in Austin? And it was great. The The open mic was fantastic. It was more of a showcase, really, because everybody just went up there and crushed. But they lock up your phones there, and they oh. don't unlock them until you leave. That show is three and a half hours long. Oh, man. And like at hour like two and a half, I was like, can we get out of here? I'm like, they're literally holding us hostage. Like, man. we can't leave without our phones. Open mic. And they don't and an open early. mic, which was crazy. Like, it was a good show, but... <laughs> I was like at like three, three and a half. My buddy who doesn't do comedy is like, dude, when the fuck is this gonna end? And I was like, I have no idea, man. This is like eternal now. Um, I'm in a death so loop. Oh no! Pretty much. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. That was crazy. Just because they locked up your phone, so you couldn't even sneak out. Um, so don't do that. I would say don't lock up people's phones and leave them there for yeah. four hours. <laughs> don't have enough pouches anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you can lock them up. Pouches, so we got to be really selective. <laughs> we just say. lock up our own phones. <laughs> this looks so we loud. Can't look at our there you go. Yeah, just... dude, that's a that's Beef a move. It. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, speaking of anything's early, we do got to get this open mic. Started. Oh yeah, let's go, man. Was, I'm sorry. It will I'm not talking last a bunch. Three and a half hours. I'll tell you that. You oh my yeah, god, thanks for having me on. I'm sorry I I blabbered the whole time. You guys rock. That's why you're here to blab, sure. man. That's what Hell yeah. coming, you man. did great. Happy to have you. Plug your uh, shit. Yeah, uh, my That's show, weird. my show's in Buffalo. I want to make sure. Yeah, the 16th, <laughs> February 16th, uh, Babeville, Buffalo. Buy tickets. We'll have uh, a 10, 10, 10 30 show. Uh, it's gonna be nuts. I'm gonna jump through a table. Follow me on Instagram, uh, Shradical. That's S H Radical R A D I C A L. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm on Facebook and I'm on TikTok. Seth Payne Comedy. Let's go, dude. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, listening everywhere. We love you. There's a live audience, I promise. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, guys.